This is it, folks. This is the big time where we bring together Ohm's Law and Kirchhoff's rules and those ideas of equivalent resistance for series components and for parallel components, and we dive into these complex circuits. We call them combination or combined circuits when we have both series and parallel together. We dive into these and start calculating the voltage drop across components, the current through components, the resistance of some unknown resistor, the power or the energy dissipated through some resistor, really anything that we could measure or we could calculate we're going to do now for these complex circuits. So let's jump right in. As we start to solve these, you'll find that there's kind of a pattern that we follow between uh, combining circuits with uh, uh, the equivalent or combining resistors with the equivalent resistor equations and then uh, you know condensing our circuits into less complicated pieces and then re-expanding. We kind of go back and forth between solving for current and solving for voltage, but there are a couple of general rules that we can, uh, can follow to, to help us with these. The first thing we'll do time and time again here is uh, look for equivalent resistance of your, our overall circuit or of small pieces of our circuit. So we're going to begin these problems by identifying sections of the circuit that have components that are all in series or all in parallel. We don't want to have a mixed section here. So we'll um, just look for those, those strictly series sections and we'll combine those into a single resistor uh, with equivalent resistance um, of R1 plus R2 plus R3. We'll find sections that are all in parallel, resistors that are all in parallel with each other, and combine those into equivalent resistors um, using the equation 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on like that. Next tip or next rule to follow here is to be really, really good about labeling things. You're going to have multiple resistors together, so you have a bunch of different values for R, plus all the equivalent R's that you calculate. You'll have currents through each resistor, you'll have voltage drops across each resistor and the voltage of the battery. You might have power or energy across each resistor, or, or uh, dissipated by each resistor. Um, so there's going to be a lot of this stuff going on, so make sure that everything is labeled on your diagrams and that your variables you're using for, say, current have subscripts to indicate which current we're talking about. So if it's the current through resistor 1, we'll do I with a subscript 1. It's also a good idea to label specific points on your wires, especially the junctions where we have multiple wires coming together or, or spreading apart. Um, and you can label those just as you know, point A, point B, point C. Um, you could do point 1, point 2, point 3, but uh, probably better to stick with the ABC since we typically will use R1, R2, R3 for the resistors. Uh, this lets you, to, lets you um, compare things across different diagrams as you redraw these simplified circuits. And that brings us to our last point here. Every time you combine resistors, I think it's a great idea to redraw your circuit. Um, so if you take three resistors that are in series and you add them together to find the equivalent resistance, make another quick sketch of the circuit and what it would look like if you made those three resistors into just a single resistor. Not only does this help you keep track of uh, where those values belong, but it's also going to make it easier to see um, you know, where, where we have sections that are all in series or all in parallel. Maybe it's not obvious when you have those three resistors in series together that those three together are also in parallel with another resistor. But when you replace those three with just one, we see, ah, here's our one resistor in parallel with one other resistor. Makes it easier to see these. And the last thing that I think is useful here is to think in terms of branches. So we may not have uh, real simple circuits to deal with here. And maybe when our current splits off, it takes uh, you know, a couple of different paths, a couple of different branches, we could say. Um, and those branches might themselves be very complex. But we can think in terms of the entire branch as well as the individual resistors. So what's the current through this branch as opposed to through the other branch? What's the voltage drop across the entire branch? What's the equivalent resistance of the entire branch? And we can use Ohm's law for an entire branch just as well as we can for an individual resistor. Let's take a minute now just to, uh, to think through conceptually some of the things that we can do with this circuit where we've got three resistors 
we have a mixture of series and parallel components. And so if we follow our charges leaving the battery, they're all going to go through R1. But then we have this split, we have a junction here, where some of them are going to go through R2, some are going to go through R3. And then the R2 and the R3 uh, paths come back together. We have all of our charges traveling along this wire and back into our resistor. So if we think in terms of current, we have some current leaving the battery. Usually just write that as I. Some amount of current going through resistor 1, I1. Some through resistor 2, or that'd be I2. And some through resistor 3, that'd be I3. We're looking for I2 here, the current through resistor 2. Then if we looked at voltage, we've got 10 volts for our battery. We've got some voltage drop from here to here. And so that'll be a delta V1. We've got some voltage drop from here to here. And so that'd be delta V2. And some voltage drop from here to here, and that'd be a delta V3. And let's think about some of the relationships we know. Oh, I missed one. Once I2 and I3 come back together, we get back to our total current I here, and back into the battery, our total current I. Uh, some things that we can say about current. Well, first off, we don't have any splits before we get to R1, so this value that we have that we're just calling I must be equal to I1. And then that gets split into two paths, I2 and I3, but the total amount of current has to stay the same. So I know that I1 has to be equal to I2 plus I3. Next, we'll think about voltage. If we travel around some loop, thinking in terms of uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule, if we start here and travel around this direction, we drop by some amount of voltage, delta V1 we called it, then we could go, say, down this way and drop by delta V2, and then all the way back over here, and then we go up by 10 volts as we go across the battery. We know that uh, our total change in potential has to be zero, so that means that this delta V1 plus delta V2 together has to be equal to 10 volts. We drop by some amount, we drop by some other amount. We have to drop by a total of 10 volts. So I can write 10 volts equals delta V1 plus delta V2. We might also go in this path, we go through R1 and then through R3 and back to the battery. And so there we can write the same thing. We have to have a total drop of 10 volts. And that could be delta V1 plus delta V3. Now from this equation, it's uh, pretty obvious that this is the case, but we can also figure out just from the fact that these two resistors are in parallel with each other. So they have the same, they have this, this end of the resistor is connected together. They have this end of each resistor is connected together by a wire. So the voltage at this location, anywhere along this wire is some value. Anywhere along this wire up to this point and up to this point is at some value as well. So delta V2 and delta V3 have to be equal to each other. So if we find one of those values, we find the other value. All right, now we'll start working with equivalent resistance. And so for the equivalent resistance part, we need to first identify a section of this that's all in series or all in parallel. I see that I've got this R1, we go all through R1, but then we have this split. And some of our current goes through R2, and some of our current goes through R3. So we can't say that R1 is in series with R2. We can't say that R1 is in series with R3, because not all of our current goes from R1 to R2. Not all of it goes from R1 to R3. Series, we have all of our current going from one to the next to the next. We can say, though, that R2 and R3 are in parallel with each other. So all of our current is either going to go through R2 or it's going to go through R3. So our next step is going to be to find the equivalent resistance of that parallel part of our circuit. For parallel components of the circuit, we'll use the equation 1 over RP is equal to 1 over R, this one is 2, 
plus 1 over R3. And so 1 over RP is going to be equal to 1 over 300 ohms plus 1 over 500 ohms. So we'll put the right side into the calculator to get 1 over RP equals 0 0.00533 and then uh, the units on that are 1 over ohms at this point. And then RP all by itself, we'll just take the inverse of both sides and find that our equivalent resistance is 187.5 ohms. So my next step at this point is to redraw that circuit with my new uh, equivalent resistance. So I have my battery first, then I have this R1, and then we go through this RP. And back to the beginning. RP has a value of 187.5 ohms. And R1 is still 100 ohms. Now I can see that uh, I've got these two resistors and they're in series. So all my current goes through R1 and then it all goes through RP. And so we can find the equivalent resistance for that series path just by adding these two together. So R series is equal to R1 plus RP, which is 100 ohms plus 187.5 ohms, which gives us 287.5 ohms. And again, we redraw, we've got our battery, and then we combine these into just a single resistor. Just call that R, 287.5 ohms. And we had a 10.0 volt battery. Now we're uh, getting somewhere here. So we can use Ohm's law at this point. We know the voltage drop across this uh, new equivalent resistance is just 10 volts. We go up by 10 volts here, so we have to go down by 10 volts here, so we end up with a net change of zero. So we know the voltage, we know the resistance, we can solve for the current then. So this is the current that leaves the battery here and goes through here. So we just called this I. So I is going to be equal to our delta V over our R value which is going to be 10.0 volts divided by 287.5 ohms. And so we get a current 0 0.035 amps. And that could be written as 35 milliamps. And that's a, a pretty typical value for a current here. We'll, we'll very rarely see something as large as a 1 amp current. It'll typically be much smaller than that. So, now we go back and we examine our, uh, our previous diagrams. We know the current leaving the battery is 0 0.035 amps. So we might look back at this diagram and think about uh, what that tells us here. So we have our value for I then is uh, 0 0.035 amps. So that means I so that means I1 is 0 0.035 amps, which means I2 plus I3 has to be 0 0.035 amps as well. Now this is great because we know everything for R1 except for the voltage drop across R1. We know the resistance and we know the current. And so for Ohm's law, there's only three variables in that equation. We can solve for the voltage drop across R1. So delta V1 then is going to be equal to just I times R1, which is 0 0.035 amps times 100 ohms, which gives us 3.5 volts. And then earlier we wrote an equation that uh, delta V1 
plus delta V2 or plus delta V3 has to give us 5.0 volts. Except I'm remembering now there was actually a 10 volt battery, not a 5 volts. So it should be 10.0 volts. There we go. Uh, now delta V1 is 3.5 volts, so that makes delta V2, the voltage drop across resistor 2, equal to 6.5 volts. And now for R2, we know everything except the current through R2. So we can set that up again using Ohm's law as uh, I2 equals delta V2 over R2. So that's 6.5 volts divided by 300 ohms. And so I2 equals 0 0.0217 amps. And uh, we could solve for the current through R3 in a couple of different ways here, either using the same method but using 500 ohms instead of 300 ohms, or we could just say that the total current has to be 0 0.035 amps. 0 0.0217 amps goes through resistor 2, so the rest of that 0 0.035 has to go through resistor 3. So just subtract the 0 0.0217 amps from the 0 0.035 amps. But all we were asked for here was the current through resistor 2, which is 0 0.0217 amps. So lots to do in these problems, but you see there's there's just a combination here of the two loop rules and Ohm's law repeated again and again using that uh, equivalent resistance idea to help us get to our end product. Document everything though as clearly as you can because you got to keep coming back to some of these things that you did a few steps ago and uh, bringing numbers back and it's a lot easier if everything is labeled correctly.